Okay, hello everyone. My name is Maria and I am coming to you from the northeast of Scotland from a city called Dundee and this is a Fibre Love podcast. Now I've just uploaded a video yesterday I think and it was about um, how to organise your um, yarn stash or your yarn collection online on a Word document and it was basically giving a template, the, basically the template I use for not just the, my yarn, but for everything. And um, everything I buy in terms of business or in terms of a hobby, because I've noticed that in those two things, um, items can accumulate, <laughs> put it that way. And um, yeah, so, but I thought I wanted to make a podcast today. I'll probably upload it next week. Today is the Thursday. Yeah, today is Thursday the 23rd. Oh, I see my phone. Uh, 24th, yeah, 3rd to the 24th of November. I'll probably upload this next week. Um, so I have uh, just post surgery. I haven't done that much knitting, although I have been getting back into it this past week. Um, and I've kind of, kind of fallen back into the whole gift knitting thing, which I didn't intend to do, but uh, I don't know if anyone else has this issue, but I do have a problem about saying no. Like, I get this really initial kind of helper's high when someone asks me, I'm like, oh yeah, of course, I'll make something for you, of course. And and I get, and I'm really excited about it for a while. And then afterwards, after, in about halfway into a garment or, yeah, um, I'll show you what I've done so far. I kind of, it wears off. <laughs> and I'm like, when is this going to end? And it becomes a slog. And, but if it was an item for myself, or for my own wardrobe, I can put it aside and then pick something else up. Because I've noticed that when I become, um, when something becomes a slog, uh, you know, in terms of knitting, it's usually because I'm kind of, not sick of, but I, I, I'm done with that f experience of that yarn in my hand, like, and I want to experience another yarn. <laughs> and uh, I usually just kind of flit in between one or two or one or three um, items. Um, that feel different, maybe uh, something that's unspun and maybe that's something that's a wee bit rustic and wooly then I'll go back to something that's like drop air and then that helps me kind of go through but if it's gift knitting then I've got this pressure on that oh my god I need to finish this for someone else and I put that pressure on myself <sighs> but I have been gift knitting and I thought I would show you a few of the items I made and I'll show you what I put, I uh, cast on as well in not desperation, but in in a, in a moment of frustration, trying to get away with, trying to get away from, sorry, um, using like the yarn that I was for the gift knits. I was just getting sick and tired of like you know um, working on them. And I also want to talk a bit about my Newtodin. You can see that in the background here. This is my Newtodin collection. I got um, if you watch my Instagram, I got the latest um, order through, and I was. Um, thinking that it's about time that I cast something on and I'm just having this huge, huge mental kind of block. I keep flitting between what to do with each uh, colorway and I think by maybe having uh, part of this podcast just talk about that and like commit the colorways to certain patterns <laughs> and hopefully stick to them, I might like, um, I might like it's like for myself, I'm like, okay, you, you've said you're going to do this with, you know, this shade. So that's you done now. So, yeah. Let me talk about the first item. This is, it's not technically finished item. I've still got one more to do. But this is a mitten that I am making in for my niece. She's 17 years old and <laughs> she's not going to have anything except black. So this is the first time I've actually been knitting... Is it the first? No, actually, I tried Drops Muscat in the summer. I don't think I showed that for a wrist warmer in black. And that was, yeah, I didn't like that. I didn't like that yarn either. I mean, it was okay, but it kept on splitting on me. I was using it on 25 centimeters. And I found that very frustrating. But yeah, black, that was black yarn. That was in the summer. However, um, this is me making using black wool yarn anyway. Uh, for the first time, muscat is cotton, I believe. Mercerized cotton, yeah. And it was okay. I, I, I understand what people say about using black yarn. 
in the evening. It's not easy. Um, but thankfully this is Aranvet. This is Drops Nepal in the shade Black Uni. So it's just like a block, black colour with no heathering. And it is... Okay, sorry, I keep on checking the camera to see if I'm in, in frame. Um, because of the, I think, the iron weight, uh, it's black. it was fine. I, w I didn't have too much of an issue with it. Um, but, yeah, so this was... Um, I got a few uh, mitten patterns I have saved. Uh, well, from uh, Just free from online. There's one that I made from Mirella Moments. And that had a cable running through it. And that was fingerless. And But it gave me a good stitch count for the base. And then I think I used... A pattern by Tin Can Knits called the World's Easiest Mittens, and I got that wrong as well <laughs> because it's it, it give a the pattern um, includes every single weight, so it includes fingering, DK, worsted, and are they iron or bulky? And I started doing the increases, not realizing that for the fingering. So this area here is a wee bit long, so I'll, I'll try it. I'll show you it when I've got it on, so you can see that. This is a wee bit, should have been a wee bit here, but I got my niece to try it on and she says it's fine. It's not too, it doesn't impede the movement too much. Um, mittens aren't something that I would personally um, make for myself. I asked her if she wanted fingerless mittens, which is something that is more my cup of tea. And she said no, that she wanted it like, like a full hand mitten. So I thought, okay, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's nothing much more to say about this. I've done one, I went to the other one, I had to take a break from it, although this is quite a nice yarn to be honest, I do like working with Drops Nepal, it's a very, it's a soft yarn, and I like working with it more than something similar like Drops Alaska, I do like this one, so I'll put that to the side, and then, oops, that's my carafe, let me show you what I've been having, I've been having this a lot, I've got this carafe here, which is basically hot water. It keeps um, the water hot for a while. <laughs> I've been working my way through this, and it's really nice. I loved like the multiple inch drinks you get this time of year, but it's very dilute. I have to like fill up half the actual cup with it before I get that really nice rich flavour, and the other half with water, and um, it just makes it become lukewarm because water is hot. But then if you had half of this, which is cold and yeah, and also it makes it a lot more expensive than something that like uh, other dilute drinks because sometimes for me a dilute drink you, I just put a tiny bit in and then enough water to give me a cup and that's got enough taste in it but you have to use a lot of this um, but it's very nice, very nice. Why did I, I got this whole tangent, I didn't need to show you that. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so this is something I've been working on for my six-year-old niece. Um, let me get my little gauntlet inside. Do you know what? Let me mention this first, because what I'm wearing, because it's so, so cold in Dundee, I'm wearing my shawl that I made from... This is probably the first item I made. It's a garter stitch shawl by Mel Gadsby called Playful Shawl. I'm making my plot, uh, I'm wearing my plotolo gauntlets inside my ranunculus. This ranunculus is made from Harvest DK from Worthmill Woolly Knit and it's combined with Drops Kid Silk Curry and the colour is Blues Blue for the Plotalopia. I can't remember what colour uh, shade that in. And the reason why I'm wearing these gauntlets is that my ranunculus, when I made this, these are, let me show, show you, like these arms were about here. So that was an okay size. It was a wee bit shorter than I wanted, just maybe bracelet, just above bracelet length. A lot of people like that length for, um, you know, if they're, if they're watch wearers, which I used to be, but not more, <laughs> not anymore. However, like I have semi-blocked this. I've not washed it or anything. Um, and it's, I feel like the arms have come up. Like this is how, like, let me open, yeah. That's how much they've come up. And now I don't want to block it because I've heard that after blocking that the length um, it opens up wide, it grows bigger wide, uh, widthway 
but it shortens length way. And actually that's true uh, with the swatches that I've made as well. So yeah, <laughs> so what I've been doing, it's actually a really good length in terms of my housework. Honestly, it's so useful having this length when you're washing the dishes and dusting and just getting your hands in water. This is an amazing length, but this area gets cold, so I've been using my gauntlets and I'm thinking, should I, shouldn't I rip, rip these, like the I-card bind off uh, out and then maybe make it longer? Because I do have yarn for this. But um, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so moving on to this item. Let me get it set up. Sorry about the needle clunking. It's got two sets of needle on it. Shall I make this as neat as possible? Okay. <laughs> Is that showing up? No, it's not. I need to push it back a wee bit. Yeah, is this showing up? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, if you can see the sleeve. Sorry about my setup. But this is... Okay, let me talk about the yarn first before I talk about the pattern because I've got quite a bit to say about the pattern. This is... Drops Melody in the colour beige. It's a lovely, lovely yarn. I bought it says I bought this at my first ever yarn purchase last year, November, from a company called Knit. Um Knitted Home, sorry, not Knit. I think Knit is the one that Simona has and she's just opened up a brick and mortar one. This is called Knitted Home, I think, yeah. So this is, I don't think I've ever like bought from them again, but this was my first drops purchase from them. I didn't know anything about yarn. I didn't even know anything about knitting. And I bought four of these. And I just wanted to experience wool yarn and what I felt like. And I, I remember just in my, I think it was, I, I uploaded a video about it. I was so enchanted by these kind of, um, yeah, by these kind of, um, wool yarns that I had never experienced before. I'd only experienced acrylic up to that point. Um, about four of these have been lying in my uh, yarn collection uh, since then because I had no idea what to do with it. The meterage of Drops Melody is uh, 140 meters for 50 grams and it's a chunky weight and it's uh, recommended 9 millimeter needles. So that's a very unusual um, set of statistics basically <laughs> because it's uh, fair enough, it's chunky, but if you look at the yarn, it's not, it's maybe like more, I don't know, DK sport, but the chunkiness comes from all the fluff that's on it. Um, let me see if I've got the composition. This is one of the ones that uh, does have polyamide in it, but in a very low, in a very low percentage compared to drops air or drops sky. Um, Yeah, so this is Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that I've got the light on inside today because there's no way I can do it in the darkness that has consumed Dundee these past couple of weeks 71% alpaca 25% wool and 4% polyamide so that's not too bad um, I have, I mentioned before that it's just the feel of acrylic, it becomes, um, I get sick of it very quickly and I want to move on from something and I noticed that with Drops Air. It's a beautiful yarn, it's very soft, but the feel of it in, in, on my hands for too long, it just, uh, it just makes me like, okay, I need to stop and um, feel something a wee bit more rustic. I think it's strange because I started off with rustic yarn and um, not even like superwash. Um, wool. It's like proper rustic wool, so just the feel of that in my hands feels the best. Um, but this is Drops Melody. I had four of these. This, what, four times 140, what does that give you? 400, something, what, 500 and... Oh my god, I, I, I can't do maths. Sorry. It didn't give me much metrage, basically. I could have maybe made a shawl or something, but I wasn't sure what to do with this. And recently, this is a gift knit for my niece, 
basically because my sister-in-law asked me if um, he could make a cardigan for my niece and um, I was like okay and I thought about it, I thought about it and I was looking up and down for um, patterns and I thought maybe uh, she, she could, I, I could get something that's child sized and um, it, well, she didn't specifically ask for a cardigan, just like a cardigan or a top or like a jumper and I saw Magnolia Bloom, the one for Magnolia Bloom Junior and I bought that pattern and I thought this should be enough and Drops Melody to cast that on because that uses like a junk, uh, bulky chunky weight and I think it's a size 6mm and I can maybe use that on a I could definitely use this on a size 6mm because it's recommended 9 and it'll give me a nice fabric and I opened up that pattern and it's a beautiful pattern and I was reading it and I was reading it and I was reading it and I couldn't understand the just after the do you know when you do the collar I think it's a folded over collar and then you do something <laughs> with with the stitch underneath, like pick it up and then put it up, uh, like left to right on needles and I was just absolutely dumbfounded, like what what does that mean? And I couldn't really find anything online um, about explaining it a wee bit and the pattern didn't really give like a tutorial or a visual kind of tutorial like some of the patterns do sometimes. Um, when a step might be a wee bit confusing, but I mean maybe most people got that. I'm going to go back to that and understand. I think I kind of understood it later on, but I'd already cast it, cast this on, and um, I had bought that pattern for my niece and I couldn't like work it. So what I thought is like I'm not going to buy any more. I'm going to try to see what I can do with what I've got, and this pattern, this pattern is the. Cardigan number seven by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This was the first pattern I ever bought and it was on the recommendation of quite a few podcasters who had um, mentioned that it's a really good beginner's pattern. And back in January when I bought this, I was definitely a beginner. Probably, like, I was just basically making a garter stitch shawl <laughs> and I hadn't really, um, I hadn't really even made anything or learned how to, like, um, join in the round. And this was, looked like a really nice pattern. Um, uh, like a really nice kind of cardigan, the look of it, something I would wear and when I bought it back in January I didn't actually realise that it's not size inclusive that the, I think the bust size goes up to 124 centimetres and I'm 130 centimetre bust and I only found that out maybe a couple of months later when I was open, I thought okay, I'm ready for this pattern now <laughs> and um, yeah and I found, found that out um, which is a bit of a shame because I bought the pattern full price and I couldn't really use it, at least for myself. Um, that pattern recommends 7mm and I thought why not use that pattern to make something from my niece. She's 6 years old but she's, uh, we're, we're a tall family, she's, we're probably around about 7 to 8, 8 to 9 um, in terms of her uh, clothing and because yeah they're all kind of a wee bit tall. However, I wasn't sure if that would work. If I cast on the smallest size on a needle that is 2 or 1.5 millimetres smaller. So this needle here are my Chiagos. And I'm pretty sure they are 5.5. I can't even... Yeah, these are 5.5 basically. And that is what I'm making the body on. Pretty sure they're five point five because I've got my six somewhere else on my male shirt jacket. Yeah, these are five point five, and I cast on, and up till about here, I kept on just checking and checking if it was getting too. Because for children, it's not really about the the height. They don't grow. Children don't grow wide. They kind of grow tall for until a certain point, and then they hit puberty, and then they get start getting a shape and getting wide. So I knew I couldn't, the width was something I needed to get, keep my eye on and I just kept on measuring this area here as I was knitting that if this got too wide up to here from this armpit to like this armpit here I'm sorry I know it's not probably not coming through let me see if I can get this a wee bit can I? yeah oh that's a lot better, hold on so I needed to, I know from this area to this area as what I needed to like keep an eye on and when I got to this point 
the increases. I, I hadn't done the full amount of increases dictated by the pattern, which I won't tell you what it is because it is a paid pattern. Um, but when I got to that point, I stopped and then I separated from the sleeves. And when I tried it on her, it was absolutely fine. Even, not, not snug, but I can tell that um, after I put the collar um, band and the button band in, it should be a really nice, slightly um, oversized cardigan on her. And she loves oversized stuff. That's the kind of jumper she wears. And yeah, so that is what I have done. And so far it's looking okay. I have done the sleeves on a 5mm round. And the only reason why I did it on a 5mm is because of the fact, I think I mentioned it before with Meronunculus, that I don't have a 6mm uh, round circumference, small round circumference, because I always use 25cm um, fixed circulars or 30cm fixed circulars for my sleeves. Um, I am not a magic looper, I just, nope, probably not going to happen. Um, I do have these Chiagos and I might give magic loop a chance again when I have the time. But, um, and I can't, see if I had done part of the sleeve I might be able to continue the rest of it with DPNs because I do use DPNs sometimes when I've got on the cuff area, when it becomes really like, um, the, the circumference becomes really small, but for the most part I do like having, um, small fixed cir circulars for the sleeves and, and that reminds me I've just, the, the biggest circular uh, needle I have is five and uh, yeah so I kind of and I, I noticed that I use a lot of a lot of the patterns that I use are on six millimeters and I, I've just made an order for a wee bit uh, for more six millimeter needles interchangeable ones from Nipro and from the Mindful collection and if you don't know the Mindful collection from Nipro is one of the only ones I have seen anyway so far that are offering a fixed circular, 25 centimeters, so that's what you would use for a sock, in six millimeters, six millimeter needles. And when I saw that, I jumped on it. It's not on Will Warehouse. They didn't have that. It's a set called the Mindful Bloom Collection. It's like beautifully made in this kind of um, like a, 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 a flower arrangement. But I didn't really need all of them. I didn't really need a set of fixed circulars. Um, which probably would have been amazing, like, you know, if I hadn't, didn't have my zings from before and my addies. But I noticed on the website called Wool Stack, it's a British website called Wool Stack, they were offering the fixed circulars to buy singly. And I bought the six millimeters because I just need it so much. Um, a lot of patterns I've noticed that, you know, I kind of look for patterns that are around about that size, six millimeters, five millimeters. Are quite good for me. So I have made this on a five millimeter, and oh, so, I'm sorry if you can like hear all the clunking. And if you see, this is a body. It's nice, and it's drapey, and this is the arm, and it's nice and drapey. But there is a certain amount of thickness to this compared to the body. It's not too bad, and when you're wearing it, I don't think it will be that bad but there's a slight difference. So I'm quite excited about my six millimeter. Oh, my camera went off. So I'm quite excited about my six millimeter um, fixed circulars coming because there's gonna be a lot of things that I will need them for. Um, I've already made one arm in the ranunculus on a five millimeter, so I, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm just gonna make that arm on a five millimeter as well. Um, but the Miles shirt jacket um, which I'm still, I haven't really touched that before, since the operation. Um, so it's no point showing that. The male shirt jacket I probably would have needed, like six millimeters as well, um, for it. So these are the two gift knits that I've been working on and trying to get finished. And, um, and I do enjoy working with the Drops Melody. The yarn is beautiful. And I think that with a wee bit of imagination, maybe combining it with one strand of a rustic four, four ply, like fingering, that it would be a lot more enjoyable in my hands. But I did have to take a break from it. And I wanted for a very long time, 
cast on some cast on something, just something with my Nutidin. I'll show you like the Nutidin colours that I've got. I'm gonna try to keep it in the camera. Because I got my parcel and I have got quite a few colours now and I really want to just cast something on and work with Nutidin. I have worked with almost every other yeah, I've worked with some Plotilope and I've worked with the Manchilope and it's just basically the Nutidin left. And I have just had a mental block about what to do with them because it's a special yarn, it's a beautiful yarn, the colours are unique, uh, the colours aren't repeatable. So if I like do something with them that's I suppose, I mean, a lot of people say about frogging and that's fair enough. I, I do frog. I, kind of, <laughs> I probably frog more than I knit. But sometimes there comes a point where on a, on a garment we'll just make do with what I've got rather than frog back. It has to be a certain point, like you've done a lot of effort into it or done a lot of colour work. So it, it's making me reluctant about casting on my knitted in. And I wanted to make this this podcast simply about maybe assigning my colours to different kind of um, patterns and seeing where I go from there. So the first two colours I bought were, which one? These, these two. I bought these again not knowing much, I bought these in March, uh, not, not knowing much about yarn and usage, uh, meterage in terms of what I would need. So I bought 300 grams of Harden and 300 grams of Yarn will ya. Now, for the Harden, I have gone back and forth. My first thing was make either the Harden or the Yarn will ya into the crystal shawl, and then maybe into some kind of waistcoat, and then um, use it for colour work, and then not even use it for colour work. Well, back then, I wanted to use it for one single garment. So I was looking for a lot of things, and it's been a long time, March has been a long time for me to procrastinate and a couple of days ago I just cast something on just out of the blue and cast it on and I thought it doesn't matter what it is hold it, try to work with it and see how you feel so I found a pattern on around about, I think it was 6mm needles or no, actually the pattern was 5mm needles but I've seen a lot of people work on 6mm needles with um, the yarn held double and I wanted to try out um, the knitted in single stranded and double stranded to see how it felt because I know with Potilope now I can use it single stranded. I um, cast on Harden <laughs> single stranded with um, with it's a shade called Ember by Whole Super Soft and it's probably the closest shade to this. Yeah, so it's this shade, Ember, and I cast on one strand of Ember with one strand of Knitted In, and I, yeah, I just tried to make a few rows, um, and with the Ember it was fine, uh, and I knit one row, two row, absolutely fine, a very nice and very nice feel of the yarn, but when I let the Ember the Ember go, and tried to knit with Knitted In single stranded on hard, and I just. It was really difficult for me. It was even being very, very careful. I'm not. I don't tension my yarn. I drop it every time I make a stitch. Um, I use my left hand, and I'm not the continental type. Like I won't use my finger to tension it. I just drop it like a left-handed thrower, basically. That's what I've been called. <laughs> but even then, even then, it was really difficult, and this yarn was breaking on me. So I just frogged that, and then I cast it on again. And this time I cast on double, but still with the ember. And I used a pattern called um, Warm Up by Espace Trico, and that is a raglan that is top down and um, knitted on five millimeters. Now I know this can be knit on six millimeters, so I thought I'd just go down one size and knit this on six millimeter, knit that pattern so on six millimeter. And when I cast it on double, using the ember again, absolutely fine. And when I started knitting with it, it was really, really nice. 
really, really enjoyable. Um, there were some places where you think that even with the double, <laughs> you're not sure if it's going to hold. It's very similar to, to be honest, it's very similar to Manchalope in that regard. Manchalope does have that same quality where the, the hairs aren't as long as the Plotilope and it does tend to kind of, um, it will stretch, stretch, stretch and not too much. You still you can still see both the strands because Manchalope is already like wound up a uh, double and you'll knit into it and later on you'll find that when you've made part of the fabric that stretch bit has just collapsed and it's broken and you've made a hole and you have to go back and um, mend that and that's what I think knitting is like so I have to be very careful about stretching even with the yarn held double however it's still a very nice experience it's just such a, a it's such a bouncy and soft and airy yarn and yeah I would um, I would compare it more to Manchalope, I think, than to Plotilope. Plotilope is very unique. I do like all three of them. All three of them I absolutely love. They all have, in terms of the unspun, unspun yarn category, they all bring their own uniqueness and they all have a place. And honestly, I wish more people would bring out unspun yarn, um, especially in the UK. I've seen a few places in America, I think, that have unspun yarn, but I don't see a lot of places in the UK bringing out this type of uh, yarn. Um, because I tend not to buy too much, apart from the from abroad, it's just in terms of customs, it's it's really, yeah, difficult. Even this, this order, uh, a custom charge of £50 this time, because uh, the colours I loved so much that I didn't really, but, uh, uh, I didn't really kind of limit myself to um, staying underneath £135. But um, if you like something though, you know, and you think it's going to be worth it, then you'll pay the custom charge. But for me, I'd love to have more of this kind of unspun yarn. I think uh, Julia, Julia from Wool and Twine is bringing out her Thrive collection again. I didn't get the, I, did, I missed it completely the first time. <laughs> I didn't really um, know about it the first time. And this time um, I have been looking and the colours as well are really up my alley. The, the warm kind of, I think it's called linen and rye. I'd love to have maybe one or two skeins for some colour work with both of them. <laughs> I think that'd be amazing. So I am looking at that one uh, next. But the three that I've got from Unspun Yarn, absolutely amazing. I need to be made more. But let's talk about the Harden and what I cast on. So I cast on this. This is the back, this is the front. Again, hopefully it can be seen. It is a raglan. These two are the sleeves, this is the front, and these two are the back. This cord is something I saw on Magda Knits, and I bought it from the Etsy shop she recommended. Now, this is what I've got to, and this comes up to just above my chest, just above my chest. I am... Um, Five foot nine almost, and I actually have a longer torso. Like I've got a long torso compared to my legs, so I'm not leggy at all. Um, I've got a very different body shape to everyone in my family. Everyone in my family is very slender and tall, and very leggy. They've got long legs, and I'm I don't have like I'm tall like everyone, but I have a tendency to have a longer back, if that makes sense, and. Um, so I have to knit quite a lot and I'm a bigger size than everyone as well everyone like in terms of females they're mostly like quite slender they're about size 8 in terms of like British sizes I don't know what that is in other countries and I'm more of a size 24 so I is one of the things I can't really share um, of my clothing or my wardrobe with my sisters or my sister-in-law so they're all one size they share with each other but I can't so I have to always knit something a wee bit longer which can come a slog, honestly, sometimes when it's when it's like long and a lot of fabric because you're plus size. But it is what it is. Um, this was size seven I knit, and size six millimeter. Size seven. I have a hundred thirty centimeter bust, and size seven was hundred thirty seven centimeters. But I was expecting more positive ease because I'm going up a needle size. And I got to this amount, and I got a really 
I'll talk about the 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 pattern first. Sorry, I'll talk about the pattern first. I've got a mental block there again. Um, the pattern was really nice. It was very straightforward, um, and I've got quite a lot more raglan um, raglan kind of increases to do um, before I separate for the sleeves, and I can see this will fit me. Um, and then I have to go back. Um, the actual pattern um, makes you do the neck ribbing before you go on to, you know, making the actual top down raglan. And I omitted that. I went straight into the body because I just didn't know if I'd have enough um, uh, uh, enough of the harden. I'm making this in a large size, like as a plus size. That's going to be quite a bit longer. Even if I want it cropped, like I'd wear it on dresses, I'd want it cropped, but it still has to be longer than the average, I would say, um, knitted, like, you know, jumper. And I have basically this plate left. This plate and this plate. So that's not going to be enough. <laughs> like, even I know that's not going to be enough. And... I was just umming and eyeing over it, like, what do I do? Shall I maybe go back? Um, and because I kind of suspected that I wasn't going to have enough, I that's why I kind of just, like, started knitting the body first, and I thought I'd go back and maybe make um, the ribbing, like, on the cuffs and on the hem, and on the collar, uh, make the ribbing a different colour. But I even make it, even with that, and the sleeve, with the sleeve length and the body length I want, I don't think it's going to be enough. So I decided that I am <laughs> going to frog this, but I am so, so glad I have ca finally cast on it in. Even though it didn't work out with the pattern I chose, just to have the feel of it in my hand was enough. And to know that on a 6mm, this is a fabric I am getting, and this is a nice fabric. It's light, it's airy, but I can already tell it's going to be warm, and it's not see-through, which is what I was a wee bit afraid of on a 6mm, that... It's going to be a wee bit see-through and have to do something underneath it, which I don't want to do. But it's absolutely fine. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe look at another pattern for Harden. And from the two that I'm thinking about is... Right, okay, so one is the Yui Poncho by Meg Cat Knits. Now, this pattern has been in my cart for not too long, um, maybe for a couple of weeks. And I wanted to... Uh, have it. I keep patterns in my cart to remind me of the things that I want to buy so that I, when I see a pattern that's on sale, like you know sometimes there's an introductory sale on and a pattern when it's new released and I tend to just jump on it and I've just accumulating patterns with no really purpose and I want to stop that. I mean some of these patterns are beautiful and I probably will knit them in the future but right now I need to work on patterns that I'm going to use. Some of these patterns are quite in uh, detailed and on a very small kind of needle size and it would take like there was a beautiful beautiful shawl I don't say by who that was released and I was just absolutely stunned and I was just about to buy it because I'd been released and I thought no because there's no way not even the next two years that I can knit that it's on like a two point something and it's so intricate and so big there's so many like different techniques that you don't know and you just don't have the time be realistic so I stopped myself from buying that, but having these certain patterns in my cart kind of stops me from buying a pattern on sale because I'm thinking, oh, on sale, okay, now that's £5, but look, this pattern that you want to buy and you know you're going to, you know, use soon is £6. That's only £1 difference, so maybe just buy the one that you know. <laughs> so the Yui Poncho was in my cart because I was actually going to buy it, and then a couple of days ago, or like, was it? Yeah, a couple of days ago, I look in my cart and... It's one pound off, and I was like, oh, wow, I just love it when that happens. <laughs> so I just bought it, and I thought, this is going to be a really nice uh, pattern. I think she's having a sale on Meg Cat Knits. Um, I don't know how long for, so I, by the time this uploads, I don't know if it's still on sale. But I managed to get that poncho on a really, really nice uh, surprise, like, price. <laughs> and I think that it's a gorgeous um it's a gorgeous kind of make, and ponchos are definitely my thing. I would, uh, I have been thinking about making um, a cape, or even going back to that bonjour high cowl. That is, I don't even know where that is. Oh gosh, thinking back on that, 
that would have been, I, I was a wee bit frustrated at the time because of things that were going on with it and I put it to the side. But that is something I need in my wardrobe. So I will probably go back to that and make a few other kind of ponchos or things that go around my um, shoulders without having arms. I really like that. I do not like having anything underneath my underarms. And um, yeah, so this is going to probably be frogged and either the Yui poncho and make colour work with, because uh, I would go for those two versions, there's a textured version and there's a colour work. And I think I will do the colour work with um, Wagenheim. Wagenheim. I've got all my neutral um, knitted in, in this. Yeah, so this is Wagenheim. And I think having that as a main colour on this, uh, on that Yui poncho is going to be a good option for Harden. The other option that I might do is the Cutting Edge Vest by Albina McLaughlin. This is a top-down vest that is steaked. So you are always working in the round, which to me is absolutely amazing. Uh, even as a very new knitter, I haven't really been um, too bothered with steaking, and I think that's probably because uh, the first time I steaked was on Drops Alaska, and it wasn't really a yarn I was too... I just wanted to do it and um, I was too frightened about, you know, ruining. And I think since then I've just not been too bothered, especially with unspun. I feel like sticking unspun is not going to be a huge issue because it's so easy to put it back again. Um, <laughs> if I needed to, <laughs> if I needed to frog it. But this vest, this cutting edge vest, um, is top down and you stick the neckline and you stick the armholes. And I think, I think you come back to them afterwards and just tidy them up. And I think that's a really, really good um, option for this as well because, again, vests, armless, nothing underneath my armpit. I will probably deliberately make the arm um, sky, I think it's the arm sky that you call it, larger so it doesn't come up too much into my armpit. The only thing about the cutting edge vest, I think it's on a 4mm or 4.5, whereas the UE poncho is on a 6mm and a 6.5, which I prefer. So we will see. We will see. I might make the the vest on a five millimeter and go down a size, which is like I, I, I like to do. But yeah, so that is my option for hard, and that took a lot longer than I wanted it to. <laughs> Let me try to go through these a little bit quicker. Right, the next shade, Yarnvillea, was again just umming and eyeing, going back and forth. I had no idea what to do with this. It's a beautiful brown shade, and I would put this into a neutral shade. It's got bits of pink and plum and grey, but it's quite light. It's, it, it can mix with beige. And I actually bought, because this is actually, it's even this is even more delicate than Harden, in my opinion. Like, it's a lot more delicate. Harden, I thought I could maybe work single, but this I cannot work single. And my only option is to work it double. This is 300 grams. I'll work it double to make something or use it single with the mohair and I would either use the drops beige with this because like I said to me it is quite it's quite neutral it's between a beige and a mauve and that's a two um, and I've got both of those um, in the kid silk mohair from drops the mauve shade which I think is 31 and the beige which I can't remember the number of but there's two beiges there's a beige and there's a light beige and I'm talking about the beige and if I use that single with the drops uh, mohair, then I could possibly potentially get a garment out of this um, using a sport weight pattern. That's my thinking. I might be wrong. Just let me know. You know my, you know my kind of um, the body shape and the size I'm looking at. The the pattern size I usually go for is a eight, sometimes a seven, um, when they number them. So I thought maybe the Festive Yoke cardigan by Skin Deer Knits, just on a sport weight. And because it's got the option of colour work, I can add in colour to give me more kind of metrage in it. I would also use a neutral for this. And if I'm using Wagon Hem for, um, for the Yori Poncho with the Harden, then I've got another neutral with this, which is, I think it's the... Uh, 
Oh, the coverts. It's not, I don't have that much of it. But I've got enough. It came in the Lucky Charms. And I think the coverts with that and using the same mohair and for both colours, like just blending them in, and I think it'd be quite nice for the festive yoke sweater. I, I wouldn't make the, the, the festive yoke cardigan, sorry. Um, I have got that pattern simply because of the structure of it. It's a top down round yoke, steeped again. And I think that would be amazing. I'm not too keen on the charts that I've been given because they're all very festive charts. And I wouldn't use that as a festive cardigan. Um, I would use charts from... Um, I would use charts from this book. 200 Fairyale Designs. And I've actually got the charts that I'm going to use. Sorry about that, that got cut off. So I would use charts from this and I've actually kind of got um, a note of the charts I, I will use for this. I, I have it on my... I've got a wee booklet here. Hold on, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be opening that book. <laughs> uh, Notes. This is frustrating when you don't write the notes in one area. <laughs> ah, I don't know. But basically, it's not the way I've done it. Is bit, um, the charts she's given are on a set number of boxes, and I've used that number of boxes in terms of stitches, not the rows, to pick out charts from this. And I prefer these charts. Um, because I mean I like skin, uh, I like Ellie's charts as well, but they're just not practical for like you know that that's kind of it makes it too seasonal. So for me, this is a better bit. So yeah, so that's one option: festive yoke cardigan. And did I have another option for this? Put this back in. I mean, I did, I did think about the Creostal shawl, but I've got other things cast on in the Creostal shawl right now. So, I think that's probably the best there for that. However, however, okay, I just, this is where, this is where it, my mind goes and I get all confused and then, ah, the mental block and I can't cast anything on. When I had these out that day, I looked at these two colours together. This is Liv and the Yarn Million. I thought, oh my god, that is stunning. It's like a very muted kind of palette, like like a very fairy tale muted palette, like looking at fairyland through a haze of fog or something. <laughs> it's just so pretty, and unfortunately, because I've got artificial light on, you probably won't be able to see like properly how these colours interact with each other. But they look so nice, so nice together. I love this type of muted palette. There's enough contrast between them but they're both kind of the same saturation. It's difficult to explain and I keep thinking, oh my god, put that into a colour work. And it's not even uh, the yarn bullia. When I put the harden against the love, oh my god, oh my god, just look at that. Now this is not the same saturation, right? This is popping against this and imagine having that as a background colour and having very delicate colour work, uh, not too much around the yoke area in Harden. That would be stunning. This colour combination, this like sage icy blue background with a pop of this kind of burnt bright orange is kind of consuming to me. I really want to do something with it. And even to the point that I was looking at like um because this is quite similar to Harden of making something um, colour work in either Summer Storm, which I've got, um, which is from Wooly Knit. Do I have that here? Yeah. It's so good having, because I'm organising my yarn collection, so so good having it to hand. This is Summer Storm, and uh, having this in the same type of colour work, this is a background colour, this is the colour work in this shade. Or, um, Using this with the other option is chiffon, which I don't have that much of now, actually. Chiffon from Super Soft Holst or UG Pearl. 
Kushi Pearl is another one I've got. This is from Juicy Rennie with this. Oh, this is, there's so much options. And this is why I have to stop buying patterns and just kind of think of what I've got. But <laughs> this is so bad. But I've seen, seen a really nice pattern um, that I think would work so nice with this. And I think it's, um, even with the Yarnvillea and that, that pattern would look so nice. It's called the Lupin and it's by Hani Rimen, Hani Rimen, I think. And the Lupin has these beautiful, like, on the, on the yoke work, it's like just, it's like almost like hanging flowers. And it's very delicate as well. It's not like very bold or bright or thick type of colour work. I don't really go for, go for that kind of stuff. Not always. It depends. And yeah, so that has been just so like difficult to kind of choose. And then, because initially when I first got this, I wanted to use it for a large cardigan. I love this colour. I love Liv. Liv is like a special colour for me. Liv and Lucra, I think. And... I didn't want to obscure it too much. I thought about holding it single-stranded with UG pedal and getting me a really oversized cardigan. And then I thought, well, I should have enough. I've got 700 grams of this. I should have enough to make uh, a cardigan double, you know, with double-stranded um, for my size, I think. And I was thinking the timepiece. The timepiece cardigan is really nice. That's by Albiona McLaughlin. Um, but, and that that will let me have this garment in its purest kind of form, in terms of the colour, I won't be obscured by anything. Just live held double on a cardigan that I can wear, and I wear cardigans a lot. But then I get go back to the colour work, and I'm thinking, oh my god, the colour work, the colour work would be so amazing. So yeah, yeah, this is why I have just been really frustrated <laughs> recently about all this stuff. Um, okay, I'll talk about the colours I have from beforehand. This is Vanessa red clay and I'm honestly thinking about making this into either the what is it called the Isa cardigan by Vert and Rose I have seen someone else make um, that cardigan with uh, Nutidin and it's really nice I like the look of that and um, these are all patterns I have in my already have in my um, in my pattern collection and then there's also a pattern by Taylor E. Owen called the Kingston Cardigan. And I think that would look quite nice with this. I've checked all the meterages of both and I know I've got enough in this. I've got 500 grams of this. And um, I think I could make that. I think in terms of colour work, this does, again, live goes with everything to be honest. It does go, it doesn't really, um, it, this doesn't really like um, spark as much joy as like Yarn Villia or Harden when combined with Liv, but it still looks nice. And um, it kind of looks nice with Languster as well. That's these, I bought these two at the same time. I've got 500 grams of Languster and 500 grams of Vanessa. Um, but I think that's probably going to become a cardigan. And then the next one I have is Languster. This is a beautiful shade. It's in the combination of purple and yellow, but the off, it's probably the most neutral shade I've got of um, from Hintedin, uh from Honor of Hair so far. I always go from the, for the unique colours, but this neutral was just too unique not to not, not to pass up basically, because you can see the yellow and purple in this. It's stunning. It's stunning. And again, um, 500 grams. I was thinking of making the... First of all, I was thinking of making a one colour garment I can't remember what it was now, sorry. But then I was thinking of making the Lunenberg. The, it's called the Lunenberg Jumper by Savory Knits, I think. And I, I've seen, I think it's Miss Evil Knits, Annalise, uh, making this uh, from Nutidin. And I'm pretty sure she held it single as well. I don't know if I'll be able to do that. If I, because that's a sport weight, see that's the thing, that's a sport weight, um, Yeah, it's a sport weight pattern. A knitted and held single, I think, is considered sport weight. It's just very delicate and it breaks. So, if she has used that single, then I think... I don't know if I could do it single, 
but if I use it with a mohair um, on the same needles, I think I could get away with that. Maybe go up to about four millimeters. I think the the garment is made on a three point seven five. If I go up to four, hold this with moonshine from Drops Kid Silk uh, mohair. I think that would work quite well, and then have different colours. I have so many Lucky Charms, and I think combining that with some of the darker Lucky Charms like um, Infinitive, Lola, Hofta, even Liv a wee bit, would look really nice in Lundberg. So that's an option for this. However, that's probably at the back. I'll probably um, not make that right now and think about it a wee bit more, but I really, really like that. And uh, it's a jumper as well, so... It's not that it need, I need to have any more jumpers right now. I'd like some. I was thinking about what I needed in my wardrobe. And yeah, I would like some more jumpers. But I think in proportion, I'd, I'd probably need more cardigans. So the latest, the latest knitted in um, parcel that I got was basically concentrated on two colours. I'll show you the first one. And this is Gilangra, which basically means yellow-grey. And... Um, this I was thinking back and forth about. I wanted to get a large quantity of this, but I had to decide which one because there's um, a weight limit as well as um, uh, that. You, you, it's a weight limit that you can't go above, and then you have to make another order. And um, I didn't know. <laughs> I did know that, but in the panic of getting the right colours before they run out. I think I put too much in my basket and I wouldn't go through it. I was pure panic. I was like, oh my God, what's happening? It's broken. And, you know, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning. This was, by the way, the day of my operation. I had my operation um, in the morning at 8 o'clock and this was, um, the update was 4.30. So I woke up for this. <laughs> but it was the other colour that really got, like, I really kind of captivated me. But um, I realised I'd had too much. So I had to, like, kind of choose which one I was going to get. And I got 300 grams of this instead of like 300 grams plus 500, which is what gives me a garment. And I have going, been going back and forth about what to make. And I first, <coughs> excuse me, my voice is going, initially thought about making the Pelto collar by Jenny Ansa. Uh, I think Koti Kotoni. I can't remember how to pronounce that, but it's Jenny Ansa. And she's a Finnish designer. And her Pelto collar is amazing. I've had it for like a while, but it's a fingering weight. And I tend not to make fingering weight, but I really wanted to see how she made that, um, uh, what do you call it, the motif? I think it's barley stalks. It's so beautiful. I mean, I definitely check that pattern out. It's really, really nice. Um, and I, and in one of the podcasts that Caroline did from Honor O'Hare, she mentioned the Pelto collar. I think someone from her team had made it in, it was in the dark blue color, but I thought, oh my God, that looks amazing. I didn't even think about making that collar in knitted in yarn. And they made it held single, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that. But this color to me, thought I thought this would make an amazing Pelto collar, um, uh, Pelto collar. Um, because it's, just, it's very similar to the color that the designer has used. It's very, it's almost like this kind of shade. It's like a golden mustard. It's really, really nice. But then I thought, you know what, collar that's nice. I don't probably wouldn't use it as much as I use a vest, but I do use shawls. So I was thinking I have the Honey Moss shawl by, um, what's her name? Andrea Maori. Andrea Maori. I've got a few of her pattern now, patterns now. Um, I kind of discovered her recently and I've got quite a few of her patterns. They're really, really nice. And the Honey Moss shawl, I've been umming and eyeing over what to do for that. It's, got, it's a shawl that's got a beautiful drape to it. When you look at the pat the projects online, quite a few people have used Drops Nepal for that, and some have used Drops um, Soft Tweed. So I was thinking about using that in Drops Nepal. However, when I got this shade, I thought this would look make an amazing honey moss shawl, but I was afraid of the drape because this doesn't like unspun yarn doesn't drape the way something like alpaca would drape. So I thought, why not use this? Held double because the honey moss shawl is an iron weight shawl, it's made on a five millimeter needle. But hold this double, use a six millimeter needle, and that'd give you an amazing massive shawl. But hold one lace weight strand of um, alpaca one by Isigar. I've got a gold shade in that, and I think it would look really nice because the drape that would give the kind of drape, and then this would give the kind of coziness and that um, feeling. Oh no, do you know? My battery's about to run out. Oh my gosh. 
Do you know what? I'll come back. I might not come back today, I think, because of the weather, but I think the battery's about to go, so I will come back and talk. Um, do the rest of the podcast later on. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back. I It's the next day, Friday the 25th. It got a wee bit dark and it got a wee bit busy, so I thought I'd come back today in the morning time and um, use a bit of light. And it's quite nice today, actually. It's not too dark. I've not got the inside light on, which hopefully will help you see the colours better. But I think, I think we were at um, Gillingra, and I was mentioning how I wanted to make the... Honey Moss Shawl by Andrea Maori. And um, the only thing that I was a wee bit afraid of was the fact that that shawl's got a beautiful drape. I've seen that shawl in other like, yarns and it just, it's got a lovely drape. A lot of, a lot of people have made that shawl in Malabros Rios, which I, I've never tried Malab, Malabros, no, Malabrigo, Malabrigo Rios. God, I hope that's right. Um, I've never tried that brand. I think it's called Malabrigo. And, um, that, that, those shawls are beautiful, uh, especially in the shade that, I think there's a shade called Glitter, and it looks lovely. Um, and there's someone who's made it in Drops Nepal Forest, which I do have, however I've got that kind of set aside for something else. And um, uh, Drops Soft Tweed as well, and uh, again, I don't have enough of that in stash, I don't want to buy it, buy more. So I thought, if I could make this, but hold it with one strand of Isagar alpaca, and I've taken it out of its Tribe Yarns bag. I bought this from Tribe's yarn, Tribe Yarns, and I showed it in the Tribe Yarn haul. Um, so that's what it's like. One of these has 400 metres, I am pretty sure. Let's have a look. Yeah, 50 grams is 400 metres, so that's very... Kind of, Focus. Sorry, I don't know why that's not focusing. It's a very small font, but it's a 100% alpaca, and it's um, yeah, it's a very thin yarn, so it shouldn't take away too much from the colour. And I think I know they're not exactly right, but there's a few shades in here that are almost like that shade. And I've got two of the um, Isigar alpaca one, so that gives me 800 meters. And I'm going to hold this double, and I have 300 meters. I think that should be enough. Um, yeah, I think that should be more than enough for the honey moss shawl. And the reason why I'm doing that again is just because this doesn't have that much drape. Like the unspun is quite airy and woolen, and. Um, Oh, and I love that in a lot of garments, but I think in that shawl it would look nice if I had just a slight drape and just holding this one yarn will add to that and it will stabilise it as well. Although holding it double, it shouldn't be an issue. So that is that. Um, have I talked about every single colour beforehand? Uh, no, I actually I don't think I've talked about Lucra. So this is a beautiful, beautiful shade. Again, I think I've got 700 grams or 800 grams. And I've got my kind of, I'm not a 100%, probably about 80% sure that I'm going to make the low-key cardigan by sure, Liv Alvin. I'm pretty sure it's Woodland Knits Liv Alvin. Yeah, I think it is. And it's just such a classic looking cardigan, the kind of cardigans I wore all throughout my teenage years and, you know, my 20s. So I think I would like to have one of those. And, um, yeah, it's to it's uh, top-down steaked again, which I love. I love those kind of patterns. And I think Lucra will be really nice. And this colour is just so beautiful. Again, it would look lovely in colour work, but I want to showcase it on its own. So that is... That. Okay. Then the last colour, and of this I did buy 800 grams because I thought it looked absolutely lovely in the in the photo in the video that Caroline's showing. However, I misjudged it slightly. It's a wee bit lighter than I anticipated. I thought this would be quite a dark browny shade with bits of red and gold in it. That was my kind of idea that it would be quite a deep shade. However, it's not that deep. It's actually very similar to Yarnvillea very similar 
like gosh you can almost <laughs> like combine these two with I mean you'd probably notice it's such a low contrast that it's it's it's, it's ridiculous I don't know if it's coming up in the camera but it's a very low contrast between you this is Yarnville here and this is Brigid um but nonetheless nonetheless I always get that oh I always get my THs wrong um Nonetheless, it is still a beautiful shade. It is slightly darker, so it's slightly darker than the yarn Yeah, uh, and this is would be a neutral beige, and this probably would be slightly more like light brown. Still, they're still both neutrals to me. Um, but you can see the colours in this. Whereas Yarn Volia makes me think in some lights that it looks beige, this makes me think in some lights it looks brown. That's probably what the biggest difference is. But together they are seriously low contrast. I wouldn't even it wouldn't even be worth doing like a colour work low contrast, like deliberate low contrast colour work. It, they'd probably just meld into each other too much. But with Brigid, yeah, so 800 grams of Brigid. And, um... So... Again, I've gone back and forth, but I really like the nostalgic, I think it's called nostalgic sweater coat, so it's going to, this is going to get cold and I like my mulled wine, warm. Um, yeah, the nostalgic sweater coat, that is a pattern by Albina McLaughlin. I really like M Albina McLaughlin. I think hands down, she is probably the, yeah, I probably have the most patterns in my uh, pattern collection from her. She has some very unique ones and she's done some things that before anyone else has done them. Like I've been looking at um, a lot of patterns coming out that are just garter stitch cardigans. And she has one from quite a while back, I think, at least two years, it's called the Blurry. And I've got that as well. I really want to make that as a DK weight pattern. So she's, and some of her construction is really interesting. I've done her um, integrated sock pattern. I'm doing her crystal shawl, which is absolutely stunning. Um, I won't show that today. I would like to make a separate video about that. It's a beautiful pattern. I don't know why I waited so long to cast it on. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, I've got quite a few of her patterns. And I think the timepiece cardigan and the nostalgic sweater coat are fairly similar, but the nostalgic sweater coat has a really nice collar that kind of sits on the shoulder and I think it'd be quite nice um, to have that in Brigid but I mean that's what I'm assigning this colour to and I think it'd be quite a nice shade I would like to make that uh, nostalgic uh, coat in a woolly knit yarn that I've got as well called um, Chestnut Brown I think that's just a, such a practical kind of uh, garment things like uh, the nostalgic coat and the mouth shirt jacket and even the low-key cardigan if I make it thick enough um, there's a few other ones well there's one called Juvel Pred Juvel Pred like J U V E L P R Y D D or is it one D at the end and that's also by Albina McLaughlin that's like a small so it's a wee bit shorter jacket things like the East Wind jacket or the Coombe cardigan if I make it thick enough those are really, really practical for me, and I think would get the most wear out of my wardrobe. Um, I wear those kind of things a lot, even over like dresses and or going out. I think they'd be quite nice. So, um, but they're large garments. <laughs> they're large garments, and right now I do want some uh, quick rewards, uh, quick results, especially after the gift knitting. So we will see about that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show was my spinning. Now. Um, I think that's all for the knit, so if you're not interested in the spinning, do I have anything else to show? No, I don't think I want to show any acquisitions right now. I don't think I have made any much more than the knitted in, to be honest. Um, I made some this morning because it's Friday the 25th, and there were some sales on, so... <laughs> But uh, we'll see when they come because Royal Mail is striking right now, so kind of I I am expecting them not to be here that quick. Um, but okay, so I got a spindle from I think it was Wingham Works, 
and I tested out spinning and this is my first attempt. <laughs> is it lace? Is it roving? Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> However, I really enjoyed doing it and I should have probably got sat down and watched a few tutorials. I just jumped right in. But I really, really enjoyed the actual process of doing it and it is a massive workout <laughs> for, uh, for me, like especially my arms. Oh my God, that first night, my shoulders are absolutely aching. This, um, this fiber is the DK Grey Shropshire from Willy, no, not Willy, it has Wincombe works and it was on the site it was um, shown as being quite dark but it's a quite a light fibre and it was really nice to work with however the next fibre that I did oh, actually where is that one So the next fibre I did was this one. Um, do you know at the very end, I'm not sure how to like get that to like have the twist remain in it, but this was a wee bit better. But this was much, much nicer in the hands. This is Jacobs and that is Shropshire, the grey one. I'm not, with the Jacob I'm fairly happy, I'm going to try to knit with that. I tried knitting this, I tried knitting a Sky Hill hat by Emily Foden and it wasn't going to happen. It's just too uneven so I'm thinking about maybe untwisting it. I don't know if that, if, if you can even do that and try and get it again. But it's, it's okay if I, you know, I don't, it's, it's, it's just the, like, you know, the whole process of learning I suppose. But this fibre, oh, I can smell it. This Jacob's fibre is absolutely amazing. This is, what's it called? Black Jacob. Just Black Jacob. It's got such a real, I don't know, not real. It feels very, oh my God, words, please come. Present. <laughs> like, how do I describe this? It just feels really nice in my hands. There we go, nice. Um, it's got a very, it's got, it's actually got a longer staple than the Shropshire. So it didn't, this one kind of, it didn't break actually. I was being a wee bit careful, but I could see it had to be quite, um, what do you call it? Careful not to pull this, like to draft it too long. Whereas this one, I could draft it a wee bit longer. I also, in the first one, didn't realise that I should really prepare the, what do you call it, the fibre kind of braid. I should kind of like, um, do you know, what, like, it just kind of spread it out a wee bit and make it a wee bit thinner. So I've done that with this, and what I do is I, I pre kind of draft it a wee bit and then I start um, on the spindle. And. I find that because of that I'm making this one a lot thinner and a lot nicer um, because I do realise that having a like a single ply is probably not the best thing to do and you should double ply and I don't there's no way I can double ply that so I hope this uh, yarn's not unsalvageable um, but I yeah that's my so far I've been right now I've got some Gotland on the, I'll show you all on my uh, drop symbol. So that is my Gotland. So you can see how thin it's now. It is now. This is like the third one I've done. This is really thin, and I've been managing to keep it quite consistent so I'm hoping to ply this um, ply this one yeah but um, Gotland's amazing amazing Eesh, dare I say even more so than the Jacob I did I did enjoy the Jacob a lot 
but there's something about the Gotland that is just so silky, so silky. It's got this, um, almost like it's been kind of tussa silk mixed into it. It's had tussa silk mixed into it. And the fibre of it's so long, and I think that is one of the reasons why I'm able to draft it quite thin. And um, have it be so kind of consistent. It basically just spins itself. It's just really easy to do. And sometimes I feel like I've draft drafted it so thin that it's going to break, but it, it holds on. And I would love to have a garment in this, and I'm thinking about getting more. Um, but like a garment quantity, I may be spinning it. But I want to get better at spinning first, though. Because obviously I don't want to um, ruin the fiber and not be able to do anything with it afterwards. But this is beautiful. And look at that halo. I don't know if you can see. There's a beautiful halo on top of it as well. And Gotland was one of the fibers that I was quite interested in because, again, I missed the update with the Lar Larka? Lurke from Fiber Tales. She has Gotland that she sells. I think she, it's not 100%. It's mixed with something and that's something to do with the way the mill spins it, it finds it difficult to spin but I would love to have like 100% Gotland <laughs> um, garment so hopefully that's going to be in my future I was so into spinning that I really thought about getting a spinning wheel but they are quite expensive and again it's a store it's a space it's a space element honestly to be on more than the money I just need space because I'm limited in what I can put where. I mean it's not I share a home with family members so I can't obviously have yarn everywhere lying everywhere. It's not fair. So yeah that becomes an issue. But other than that I really want to look into spinning a wee bit more but I think for now I'm happy with the drop spindles. I've got I got these from um Wincom Wool as well. I made another order not too long ago, I think it was just before my operation, from World of Wool, and they had some amazingly cool fibres. Honestly, they had things like milk fibre, and and you know what? I'm going to show it next time. I'll probably make a bigger video, or maybe a standalone video about my spinning, and show you some of the. Uh, vid I made some short segments of videos um, while I was spinning for the first time, so I think that'd be quite interesting to see. But yeah, I think that's enough for today. Um, 17 minutes. Yeah, I think that should be underneath an hour, <laughs> but we'll see. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.